Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we are back with Cobra Convergence. We were talking with another Cobra Convergence presenter. This is Ken from Toy Connections. Uh, even though I just introduced Ken from Toy Connections, I will ask uh, Ken to introduce himself and say something about himself and what he does uh, here on YouTube. Well, first off, when you abbreviate to HCC 788 and don't go by the full name, I could just selectively read it as helmeted. Cobra Commander yeah. 788. I think I've just given you an alternate alias and a troll yeah. account for myself if I ever just want to sneak into the comments. And uh, <laughs> I need a lot more free time. But sorry, you wanted me to introduce myself. So um, on top of that icebreaker, my name's Ken. I'm with the Toy Connections YouTube channel. This will be my second uh, Cobra Convergence. Been a G.I. Joe fan my entire life. Been a fan of toys my whole life. I've uh, been watching Hooded Cobra Commander 788's channel ever since I needed to learn, well, just, just to know stuff about G.I. Joe, want to learn something about the Terradrome, I go there. When I needed to assemble my flag, I went there. So it's cool to be part of Cobra Convergence right now because it feels, it, it's that big community collaborative event that I look forward to because of just the length of how long it takes over the summer. It takes basically the entire month of July. As for me, I do a lot of like deep dive and history type of videos for a lot of toy franchises, G.I. Joe and Transformers being one and one A on my channel. Um, big wrestling fan, bit of a Motu guy. Um, Star Wars, you name it, I'm probably into it. I have a weekly podcast that I call TKO, or that Hans Chow um, named as Toy Connections Online or TKO. Actually, the last time Hoodie was there, it was with Hans. Um, we like they, Hans. Hans is a good friend. Hans is a good friend, and we'll talk yeah. about him a little bit more later. Are you listening, Hans? Are you are, are, are you in the oh, comments right now typing in, in, in all caps, Hans. even though this is, yeah, pre-recorded? So, <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, well, you, you said this is your second year. Uh, can you remind everybody uh, what you did last year for Cobra Convergence? Anybody who hasn't seen that may want to roll back and check it out. Yeah, so one of the patrons of my channel, Mark uh, Mark Olson, who coincidentally I was just texting minutes before this this uh, this interview started, was um, he had uh, 3D printed a three and three quarter inch gold Cobra throne that um, I uh, well I really like it. It's his craftsmanship. So I made a video about it. I made a video just showing Serpentor on there, Cobra Commander on there, whether or not Destro and the Baroness take over, whether the, the Crimson Twins take over. And I tried putting it in that empty room in the Terror Drone, which I didn't do this last year in the video, but I did it recently. I, and if you take out the base, the throne does fit in that. So that could be Serpentor's throne room that Pythona breaks into if you're trying to reenact the scene. But that was that that uh, that throne video is uh, was last year's uh, Cobra Convergence video. So, yeah, uh, uh, that was last year. You were in another one um, uh, last year because I believe you joined me and a couple others with um, with uh, Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse. Um, yeah, the, representing representing the slaughterhouse. Uh, mm -hmm. So what do you remember about that? Uh, um, I could tell everybody because I was there, but I, I would like for you to re recount, uh, uh, regale us with uh, uh, with the other Cobra Convergence video that you were in. Yeah, I mean, I've been on, on Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse quite a bit. So if, if I recall correctly, Steve from Joburg was on that one. Um, hope I'm not mixing two videos <laughs> together. But And we did talk about the G.I. Joe movie, yes. um, from what I recall. And um, I remember saying that I wasn't a big fan of Cobra Law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we did voices. Like, uh, yeah, we did, uh, we did a reading and... Um, I got to be I got to be Cobra Commander. That was exciting. Oh, that was another one we did on Jay Bartlett's channel because we kicked off yeah, Cobra that's Convergence right, that's right. with a with a pre recording on Zazel Sergeant Slaughter Slaughterhouse channel. Then later on, so technically I was in three Cobra Convergence oh my videos. Oh well, uh, last you're, year you're quite you were quite the veteran. That was to make up for CC five and CC four. <laughs> all right, all right. So yeah, you're you're uh, you're now a, a full veteran. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll let you know what the secret handshake is now. Um, but yeah. you have Zach you have and Slater and up. Say by the Bell. Yeah, <laughs> you have one coming up. You uh, well, you have one. You sh it should be available now as people see this um, for Cobra Convergence Seven in 2023. Um, and uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, about what you've got presenting for us this year? History of G.I. Joe toy line in the year of 1983 was my choice this year for uh, 
CC7 video. And I like the idea of covering the key toy lines that affected my life in a year by year basis. You see some channels have done it. Um, Michael Mercy's done it on, on his channel as well. Um, I've got, for example, when I look at the history of LJ and WWF wrestling superstars, there's six years of that franchise. I've covered four out of the six years, not necessarily in chronological order, but for GI Joe, I did a history of GI Joe in 1982 last year, uh, with, chad who i believe is participating this year on this year's yes. cc and uh, we did that collaboration together and when i did gi joe history 1983 i wanted to do it a lot sooner because there's 12 years worth of gi joe so it's like it's hard to cover all the years if uh it's hard to cover all those years if um what do you call it if you don't do them I mean, it might take me 20 years at this point to cover them. It's just, if I did one in 2022, one in 2023, how am I going to get the whole series done? Mm -hmm. But shows like The Toys That Made Us, they do a great job of covering like a 45-minute episode to give a franchise overview. Um, I've, I've watched that episode like 10 times, but I'd love to give like a deep dive recount of each year. Some years are better than others. 83 is one of the more standout stellar years. Um I've elected uh, this time to collaborate with Hans Chow. Um, he did a great voiceover, um, not voice acting, literal voiceover from a script and everything. Uh, he's very good to collaborate with because he sent his lines. Not only did he send them very quickly, but like he sent multiple takes with different inflections on each one in typical Hans detail oriented fashion. And um, the couple people I have shown it to just to get, just to get a feel for what they think they're like, he's good, bring him back. And do more yeah. and by the way can do more videos like that so yeah uh yeah and i know uh, if anybody watches it i know it doesn't bug you but like because at the time in development i wasn't sure if it was going to be my cc7 video even if i'd already been invited to cc7 um so i didn't shout out cobra convergence in the video but i will shout it out in the description and in the title but i also thought it was a good way to include hans in cobra convergence so i said let's just let's just run with it let's just roll with it because Ooh. uh we yeah. need to have Hans in as much as as we can get him in. I think there we I, go. I, I, I'm I'm all for that. Yes. Um. So eighty three. Um. Uh. Now, obviously, you're going to share your thoughts on uh, nineteen eighty three in your video, uh, and we want everybody to go check that out. Uh, but just like a, a an overview, a flyby. Um. What are some high level thoughts that you uh, have about it? Um. And then people can go check out your, uh, your video for more information. Well, I mean, a couple of months before I actually filmed the video was when I finally got the 83 headquarters. So put it that way, like getting that covered in the video was something that I was like, okay, if I'm going to do this video, I want the raw footage of the 83 headquarters, right? Because it's the first like plastic based headquarters. I know the missile command headquarters was made in, in 82, but it's a cardboard base rather than a plastic base. Excuse me. Um, and well, while I don't have every vehicle, you know, Carson from 3D Joe's is great for sourcing information. Mm -hmm. um, you just credit the site. And, but I, the, the headquarters was important enough to me that I wanted to get that. So um, as for an overview of the rest of 83, it did a lot to expand the cast. You know, the adding of the swivel arm just made for better playability as a kid, which you all know, right? Um, you know, like you see some of the, some of them right here, right? In fact, there's flight. There's even flight suit Scarlet from the uh, Sky Striker, which I do show my Haslab Sky Striker in a couple of clips, just because I don't have the original Sky Striker. But yeah, as as for highlights, I mean, it's what can I say? Like the first year introduces GI Joe to the world. Eighty three is to me where is the launch off point. You know, it's a it's a big introduction in eighty two, and then a big launching takeoff point. In fact, people ask me, GI Joe or Transformers? And you've seen my channel, Brian, you know, that's a hard choice for me. That's like mom or dad, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I've only got one kid, but that's like pick your favorite kid type of thing, right? And for, for me, as a vintage toy line, I actually think G.I. Joe is the better line, vintage line. Right? Uh, so 82, you mentioned 82, um, that there were a lot of cost cutting uh, measures in 82, lots of reused parts. It obviously was a huge success, but 83, they they uh, actually introduced a lot that they, they just couldn't in 1982. You yeah. mentioned the swivel arm, but like um, more characters, more interesting characters, uh, more, you know, uh, variety. Um, that really was, you know, kind of when it, um, 
sort of came into its own. Um, 82, yeah, that was the beginning, but it was really throttled back, you know, just uh, uh, lots of even reused heads. Like you had Joes that look exactly like other Joes. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, 83, 83, uh, they really they really took off. They really hit their stride. And the thing about, about toys from back then is, you know, if they reused heads, they reused torsos, we didn't mind, right? Like today, yeah, we see the, you know, whether it's classified or Marvel Legends, they'll reuse parts and then they'll put web, web gear over top of it to make it look a little different, different paint mm-hmm. apps. But like with Joe's, like one figure look exactly like the other sometimes and their face and everything, you know. Um, but that was the innocence of toys at the time. You yeah. did it just enough to remind you that you were a kid. You weren't that detail oriented, right? In fact, I released a video recently called the Renaissance era of toys, which I consider as today's era. And I consider that eighties era as the golden age. Um, because to me, a golden age, you're already at the summit. You just want to be there in perpetuity. A Renaissance, you're striving for more. And in this artisan era that we live in, I feel it's a renaissance. But the 80s with 83, arguably, well, I think 85, 86, 87 was more of a peak. But a lot of people think 83 was just as good, if not better. To me, that's like the height of that golden period, right? Because by 89, 90, Transformers and G.I. Joe are both both going downhill. He-Man's out of the picture. Um, they're paving way for Ninja Turtles. You know, G.I. Joe's back with the Deke, with the Deke series. Sunbow's gone. But it's not as good a series as we all, you know, maybe some people like it more, but I don't know many people who like it more. So anyway, sorry. Um, But uh, I mean, that 83 though, whether you consider it to be like the pinnacle or the beginning of the ups, that it's still like a a steep curve, you know, that's um, that, that is when uh, that's about when GI Joe started to take over the world. Animated series comic book was, uh, was, had been going for a year by that point um i did want to ask you something you touched on uh transformers uh but uh i wanted to see if you would talk to us about your other toy interests because i know you have some uh yeah. so uh, what are some other uh toy lines that you are passionate about well i've talked about transformers gi joe wrestling and a little bit of motu but um star wars mask a um, little bit of ninja turtles what else is around here have a couple of visionaries have a few thundercats but one thing i'm really into right now all right i move my head what do you see behind me that you wouldn't normally see in most real american hero collections um is that it looks like a 12 inch it's the 12 inch action soldier with the combat attack set and uh some of the field equipment set pieces are there as well but it's a it, it is it, it's also got the original fatigue cap, not just the combat hat, nice. uh, combat helmet. So it's it's a complete action soldier with a complete combat attack set and pieces from the field equipment set. Like that's I, okay. So I'll tell you where I'm going with this before I go all fanboy. Is that's where GI Joe started. It's not Absolutely. the Joes I grew up with. In fact, I don't even think it's the Joes you grew up with. I think you're a few years older than me. You didn't grow up with those Joes either. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, that was um, before my era. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was before you. So, but I love studying toy history, and I like, I respect where we came from, right? Um, I'm gonna try to point the camera way up there, and this answers your question to some degree, but it also puts a spin on on your question. You see the Optimus there? Uh, yeah. That's not Optimus. That's the Diaclone. You remember the Diaclone line of Transformers? Yeah. That's the Diaclone battle convoy that, that came before Optimus. Nice. If I go into that bookcase there, um, if you remember Zor and Screech from Masters of the Universe, I've got the big Jim Eagle. Not complete. It's just the bird, right? Yeah. But I like to study the time before the Golden Age, right? Before the big properties got big before the deregulation of television standards. That's kind of what I'm into right now. Right. Like I've got a a 66 green beret upstairs. Right. Um, I'm a fan of that because reminds me of Falcon, even though Falcon came after, but I'm Canadian. I'm up here. I'm not a military person. Falcon was my introduction to the green beret. So the 66 green beret was like my, the predecessor, right? This action soldier, I think in, in theory, Joe Colton was one of the action soldiers. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it may not be that retcon, action soldier, but yeah, connecting yeah, those two eras. Through Retcon, he was one of the action soldiers who eventually became a Green Beret, so he could mm-hmm. be the Green Beret. 
right? Um, I know he looks like the Adventure Team Commander, but the Adventure Team Commander has a different name. So anyway, we're getting really deep, deep diving here. Hope you don't mind the, uh, the you know, the 15 la layers deep of nerdiness on, on this. Um, but like I was looking at the 12-inch Joe in the Dress Marine outfit, which is one of the less desirable sets. It's, it's like a fraction of the price of that mm -hmm. and a fraction of the price of the Green Beret. But why do I like it? 87 gung-ho. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? You know, so I have this like backwards facing approach as opposed to the forward facing approach of, you know, like you timestamp your, the, the peak of your, of your collecting or your, of your memories as your childhood. And most people take that and look forward. I look forward, forward, forward. Now I want to look back and see where we came from. I want to know where we started. Right. The, so. There's a lot, there's a, 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 a deep, um, um, uh, a gold mine of history that can mm -hmm. be uncovered there. I mean, you can go back as far as, you know, the, um, the fifties, the forties, the thirties. I had, um, a phase where I was collecting, uh, the, um, the promotional toys that were, um, in like Dick Tracy radio shows in the 1930s. Wow. Um, uh, products uh, made for kids have been around for a while, for a long time. As long as there has been an entertainment medium, there has been um, a, a children's entertainment tied to it. Um, so uh, that's fascinating. Now, I know that we're, we're Cobra centric here. Yeah. Um, but um, there was um, the, those early Joes, they didn't necessarily have a bad guy, uh, did they? I mean, right. they, had, they had like the soldiers of the world. Yeah, yeah. They weren't exactly the, the enemy bad guys, but... Yeah, it, you could, because they were from other nations, you could uh, makeshift them into the villains. But G.I. Joe was your own headcanon back then, right? Like, I tried talking to fans from that era, and it's always the same thing. It's like, those are the real G.I. Joes. And I'm like, you don't have Cobra. Yeah. I got to argue, like, we came first. We could stomp on your Joes and looking at them, yeah, that, that giant action action soldier can stomp on can stomp on them. But to me, G.I. Joe will always be a real American hero. That predecessor, I look at the same way as I look at the Diaclone and Microchange toy lines of um, of of Transformers. Like, even the Macross uh, Valkyrie that I have, which Gaz is a big fan of that, Toy. He's like, oh my god, you got a Macross Valkyrie in the box, and I'm like, yeah, but to me, that's that's the pre Jetfire Transformer, mm -hmm. right? Like, I've watched the that one of the old Macross movies. I forget the name of it. Shows how big a fan I am. Um, but I get that because it's the pre Jetfire. I get the big gym stuff. Like, I still want a big gym Tiger as the pre Battle Cat, but it's expensive, and I haven't come across one yet. But like, I just love the history. Like, so when you ask what else am I into other than the the to toy lines I'm into. I'm into like the, the early history era of action figures specifically, but you're right. There's toys from the forties, fifties, sixties that aren't coined as action figures or function like action figures, but they exist. So uh, they, they yeah. kind of filled the same role though in, um, in, I guess, marketing to kids and tying, uh, giving kids something that tied into something to like their favorite character or something like that. Um, so um, where where in your collecting sphere does uh, Star Wars fit in? Because Star Wars has a a, a niche in that uh, in mm -hmm. that history as well. Yeah. So I got into Star Wars a bit later than other people. Um, I sometimes blame the year I was born, but technically I was born before Return of the Jedi. So you know, and I just didn't get a chance to grow up with Star Wars with the circle that I was in. Like by the time I was like. A functioning human being in terms of you know being able to just understand stuff it was already like 1986 way past the star wars craze so i'd yeah. hear about it my introduction to star wars was the muppet babies spoof on it right that's where i learned most of my star wars initially until i was, was about good. that was a good one though that was a good one though until yeah. i was about 13 and somebody's like we're watching episode four a new hope right now and i've always called it episode four a new hope but sometimes i get a comment in my sec a, a section a, a comment in my videos and live streams that we know that you're not a Gen Xer because you call this a new hope. You don't just call it Star Wars, yeah. Mr. Millennial. That's what I get, <laughs> get, get sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so, it, yeah. Um, it, yeah, it is true. It wasn't technically called that at the when it was first introduced. That's, that's true. That's true. But it has been called that for a long time. Well, Transformers wasn't G, wasn't G1 for the longest time either. 
Yeah. Right. That guy wasn't Joe Colton until until the 1990s. So there you right. go. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Retcons help. Yeah. All it, about it. it. Sometimes it helps you. It helps you make sure you're you're on the same page and talking about the same thing. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, Cobra Convergence coming up. Um, uh, we've talked about uh, your interests. We've talked about what you've um, uh, what you've got co- coming up for Cobra Convergence. Now, I know we're recording this fairly well in advance, but um, do you have uh, anything coming up on your channel, anything you're thinking about or working on in the future that you'd like to um, kind of drop a hint about, uh, give people a little yeah. teaser, maybe an idea of why they should check you out? Yeah, I mean, I, I just did that Renaissance era of toys video at the time of this recording. We're technically in the spring, even though this will air in the summertime. Um, by the time this comes out, I will have aired a history of the Transformers 1986 movie, um, which I was literally just working on tonight in the hours before this interview. And um, by the time this re- this is released, I will most likely have dropped my Evolution of Toys, the Green Beret, uh, video where I talk a little bit about the history of the Green Beret in the military, just through research, Google, other people's videos, Wikipedia. I don't, I don't have direct, um, I don't have a direct line to military service, but because I got the '66 Green Beret, I wanted to look at the evolution in the toy line through the years, which is, you know, Lieutenant Falcon, and then the classified Falcon with the controversial head sculpt, the Joe Colton figure that features basically the action soldier fatigues with the Green Beret hat, which. I found out in a hooded Cobra Commander 788 video that was the case, that he was the early release of the Green Beret with the action soldier fatigues and the Green Beret hats. And also just um, talking about just just basically showing all my Green Beret figures, all my renditions of Falcon. Um, Longbow guys, if you're if you're watching, I forgot to mention Lancer, so I'll mention him now. Lancer in the call sign Longbow line is is a Green Beret. So this is my this is my addendum mention to that. Um, but yeah, that's a video that GI Joe fans um, will probably like. That's why I'm taking a little extra time to talk about it because I know that Cobra Convergence is uh, GI Joe centric. So yeah, um, you talked about uh, this being kind of the renaissance of uh, of toys and action figures, uh, and you mentioned Call Sign Longbow. Um, we are in kind of an era where there are a lot of independent um, action figure lines coming out. Um, is that kind of in the renaissance that you're referring to yeah. because that is really uh, happening now with some really yep. cool people making some really cool things yeah if you if you get a chance to watch it because it just launched on my channel literally hours before like that was the most recent published video on my channel which is literally just hours ago if you get a chance to watch it i, I exactly talk about that i mentioned that the fan has become the creator so for example pixel dan is now making books right carson metaxas from the 3D Joe's is making books and then Operation Recall. I talk about the renaissance of um, military figures, whether it's six inch, whether it's um, three and three quarter inch. I talk about how, you know, we started a bit of a renaissance in the early 2000s with Marvel Legends because, because that scale became really popular later on and that's where it started. But the Four Horsemen Studios later on got their own original IP. Then you got Animal Warriors with the Kingdom. You got Savage Crucible. So basically, the Renaissance boom, like the peak of the Renaissance, is when the fan becomes the creator. You're in the artisan space now. You strive for more. You strive for better. You're never happy. You'll just well, you're happy, but you're never. You're never. You, you don't. You don't look look at your toys with blissful ignorance anymore, right? You're always striving for better. So yeah, and I think we're in a, an era where you can do better. I mean, you're trading. Um, uh, lower production runs and maybe a slightly higher cost per figure for the kind of figures that we could never have gotten um, yeah. in the yeah. 80s and the 90s. Look, th- over here, the innocence of toys in the past is gone. It's all about the detail now, mm-hmm. right? Detail, innocence right here, right? Golden age, renaissance. Like that's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's right around me. Right. Though someone did ask me a loaded question today. Does that mean there was a dark ages in between? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I do think there was, but it wasn't dark ages as in a bad thing. Right. It's dark ages, like the middle ages kind of kind of thing, which I think is that 90s era after our 80s and early 90s toys died off. And before the launch of Marvel Legends, I think that was kind of that middle age. And the whole reason that started is because I said we were in a golden age now about a year ago. And both Adam from Go Figure and Zazel from Slaughterhouse said, no. 
no, you're it's your golden age, but it's not everybody else's. And I'm like, let me let me go through this with a fine tooth comb. And oh. I came back, I came back with Renaissance. That's I think I think that's fair. <laughs> I, I, that's, yeah. And and and, I, and I, nobody will hold you to it. it it's it's um you know you don't have to uh, uh um strain the the metaphor beyond you know uh, reason. But I think yeah. that it, uh, it makes sense as uh, as you applied it here. Um, that that dark ages that you mentioned, or the the medieval period. Um, um, I mean, obviously there there are good toys made in every era, but there was that that time when um, there was a shift to electronics that was really becoming a thing, um, and then uh, but it was before we started seeing kind of like you said the resurgence of uh, mm-hmm. larger scale figures, uh, more detailed figures. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll make a video on it someday. But like I think that that middle age period is kind of like when we got Sergeant Savage, GI Joe Extreme. You know, um, there's a few th- good things that came out of it, like Beast Wars came out of it, but that's that's from a character and continuity perspective. I think the Beast Wars figures look really dated by today's standards with the, you know, um, with just with, with just their aesthetic, right? But that's around the time Spawn came out because Spawn was an outlier at that time. We didn't really know what we were looking at when we saw Spawn, right? So that's why I think it was created in the Middle Ages, but it's responsible for the Renaissance is kind of how I that, look at it. Yeah, Spawn. I remember Spawn. Spawn was um, the, like the McFarlane toys. That was a, a little bit of a, a revolution at the time because oh, it, it still it did straddle that era when we were still getting, um, you know, your, your more standard action figures. And that was just something totally different. Mm hmm. Right. Like even like the Playmate Star Trek stuff, right? Like they're not, they're affordable because as much as everybody likes Star Trek, those aren't the most popular collectible type of figures. Right. And I've been asked as well by people, um, hopefully we're not too far off topic here, but like if I consider the golden age from like the start of Star Wars to like the end of G.I. Joe, the reason for that is because Star Wars revolutionized things. G.I. Joe ended in 94. Transformers had ended a couple of years earlier, though Generation 2 was ramping down power rangers was kind of getting going so there was a change there he-man was long gone even new adventures of he-man was long gone but i got asked the question what about that inception of gi joe from 64 to 78 where you've got migos world greatest greatest superheroes you've got hot wheels is kind of its own thing but you've got fisher price adventure people and i'm like here's the thing that was before the deregulation of children's television so to me i don't know what i would call that but I, I consider it something like a Genesis period, if that if that makes sense. You know, Genesis, Golden Age, Middle Age, Renaissance. Am I being too metaphorical here? But to me, it makes sense. Right? Uh, it, 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 I mean, it was where things got started. I'm mean, literally things got started there. Um, That's why Genesis. Right? It, it, so. um, Maybe it's too it biblical. Started some trends but... that that carried on to other action figures, um, like. Um, Mego carried that forward, smaller scale, but they wanted the articulation, they wanted the costumes. So, um, yeah, this that was the genesis of what eventually evolved into right. um, into the golden uh, uh, age that uh, that we experienced post uh, Star Wars. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I can dig it. I can I can get behind that. Yeah, it's really really metaphorical, and it's like yeah. no, there's nothing official. Like I I can't authorize the, these terms, but. When I talk to someone in a similar mindset, they're like, "Yeah, that makes sense," you know, yeah. right? So, anyway. Yeah, and, and you know, there these the, things like this; these are, these metaphors are useful just for conceptualizing things. So you know, you, you don't want to um, strain the metaphor too much, but to, for the, just for the purpose of conceptualizing things, I, I think that's not a not a bad idea. There you go. And anything before that era is kind of like the prehistory period yeah you know what i mean so yeah like like those uh the dick tracy stuff that i was talking about that's you mentioned yeah history. some um, of the some of the string puppet figures because i think there were there are some string puppet superman type of figures as well uh, yeah um uh i mean it's interesting because there there is an evolution but it's not mm-hmm. just like a steady um curve there are moments where with uh, what did you call it? Punctuated equal equilibrium, where there's an event like Star Wars or like GI Joe in 1964 that kind of shifts the entire industry. Yeah, big time. Like right? you get to the point where, like, you get to the 80s and you get these really great franchises like Brave Star, Visionaries, Cops that sort of take off but don't really take off. You know, 
mask takes off to a mediocre level and it kind of just you know like it, it, it looks like it's going to get up there and then just you know what i mean um centurions you name it there's so much out there right because you were buried under the big three and star wars and when the big three started to fizzle out you got turtles and then in there you've got this wild card called real ghostbusters you know what i mean like um, that's why it was so blissful at the time. I, right? I would say blissful, uh, even though, um, like you said, uh, they were kind of under the uh, the weight of the big three. For a kid then and a collector now, um, the, the toy companies were willing to take a chance on something like uh, uh, mask or or sectars or whatever, and and it, these things are out there. They're not as big as the big ones, but they're still out there, and we still have them. So that's that's right. That's cool. That's right. So, yeah, there you go. Well, um, uh, we're about uh, we're about at the end of our time, and I want to wrap up. I want to thank you for uh, being here. Um, do you have any parting words for uh, the folks who are watching? I want to make sure that everybody knows who you are and uh, knows where to find you. Well, hopefully, I didn't go too far off topic here because right. you invite me to talk GI Joe, you end up in Transformers. You invite me to talk Transformers, you end up in wrestling. <laughs> like it's just what happens. Is anything life. we want to talk about, so <laughs> uh, you can just find me on Toy Connections here. Um, it's Toy Connections, one word on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Um, so yeah, just hopefully you, you enjoy. People enjoy my stuff. I'm gonna keep cranking it out. And um, yeah, gonna just keep participating as part of the community, and uh, always just want to be one of the boys, you know. Well, um, uh, thank you for being in, and I look forward to seeing what to do in the future. Thanks for having me. All right, thanks, uh, and good night, everyone, and we'll see you again soon. Cobra.